Hey guys, today we're in Clarksdale, Mississippi, and we're going to take you along the Music Heritage History Trail. Come along with us. Let's go explore. Of course, you can't talk about Music Heritage in Clarksdale and not come to the iconic crossroads. The rich tradition and culture of blues music remains at the heart of Clarksdale's identity and continues to bring people here today. The father of the blues, W.C. Handy, and his family lived at this site from 1903 to 1905. While in Clarksdale, Handy was undoubtedly influenced by the Delta Blues. He collected Delta Blues and later published some along with some of his other more familiar influential music. This marker is right across from the train station or the visitor center that you see in the background. The reason we made the trip to Clarksdale today, frankly, was to visit this Sam Cooke marker and the New Roxy. Honestly, there is no known connection between Sam Cooke and the New Roxy. I guess it just seemed like a cool place to put his marker. To quote the marker, the golden voice of Sam Cooke thrilled and enchanted millions of listeners on the hit recordings, You Send Me, Shake, A Change Is Gonna Come, chain gang and many more cook's captivating blend of gospel blues pop and rhythm and blues made him a pioneer of the genre that became known as soul music in the 1960s cook was born in clarksdale on january the 22nd 1931 his family resided at 2303 7th street until they moved to chicago in 1933 he began his singing career with his siblings and a group that they called the Singing Children. He later sang with the Highway QCs and developed a national following on the gospel circuit as a member of the Soul Stirrers. In 1957, he made the move to cross over from gospel to pop music. He added the E to his last name to help him establish a new identity as a rhythm and blues and pop singer. Cook's musical appeal transcended the boundaries of race, age, and gender at a time when that was especially hard to do. Sam Cook was one of the first African-American recording artists to own his own label and publishing company. He also made headlines during the Civil Rights era by refusing to perform at a segregated concert in Memphis in 1961. Rock and roll and rhythm and blues pioneer Ike Turner began his career playing blues and boogie-woogie piano right here in Clarksdale. Ike was born less than a mile southwest of this site at 304 Washington Avenue. He was born on November 5, 1931. In his preteen years, he got a job here at the Alcazar Hotel, where he operated the elevator and did janitorial work. Turner later rose to fame as a DJ, a producer, and leader of the Kings of Rhythm Band and the Ike and Tina Turner Review. Ike is probably best known for being part of the Ike and Tina Turner Review and for, of course, the breakup surrounding his marriage to Tina Turner. He made other very important contributions to blues and American music before his marriage to Tina. He is credited with leading the band that recorded Rocket 88, which is generally considered to be the very first recording of a rock and roll song. At least it was one of the very first. They made this recording at Sun Studios in Memphis in March of 1951. Jackie Brinston and his Delta Cats are credited with Rocket 88, but Ike Turner was probably the most creative force in that band. Before going to Sun Studios to record the song, they practiced Rocket 88 in the basement of the Riverside Hotel right here in Clarksdale, where Ike and some other performers lived. We show you the Riverside Hotel in another video. Clarksdale is famed for its many legendary blues artists who have achieved their success after moving away. But there are some world renowned musicians who've remained lifelong residents of Clarksdale who never moved away. Chief among those musicians was Big Jack Johnson. 
He was one of the most creative guitarists and lyricists in the blues genre. When not on tour, Johnson considered Red's Blues Club, which you're looking at here, as his home base. Robert Palmer once called Big Jack Johnson possibly the most original blues man alive. He took the Delta Blues to new directions with his electric, innovative, instrumental forays and topical songs about AIDS, war, domestic violence, and the like. The Sunflower River Blues and Gospel Festival, a preeminent showcase for homegrown Mississippi talent, began in 1988 as a promotion to draw area shoppers to downtown Clarksdale. Its dedication to showcasing authentic blues soon made it a renowned attraction for blues enthusiasts all over the world. One of the major factors behind the great migration of African Americans from the South to the North was the mechanization of agriculture, which of course diminished the need for manual laborers. In 1944, the Hobson Planting Company produced the first crop of cotton to be entirely planted, harvested, and baled by machine. Blues pianist Joe Willie Pinetop Perkins was a tractor driver here at the time. He later played in the band of Muddy Waters and enjoyed a successful solo career. Cotton and the blues are intimately connected and possibly is simply because field hands who could play an instrument would sit around and entertain other workers and they would also maybe even pursue music as a career to get out of the back-breaking work in the fields. Blues performers have often said they can make more money on a Saturday night than they could all week long working in the field. Here at Hobson during the 1940s, Pine Top kept a foot in both fields. He was a tractor driver here and also a professional entertainer. One interesting story about Pine Top, he was inducted into the Army in June of 1943, but the plantation owners were able to remove him from a busload of draftees because tractor drivers were considered essential to the war effort. Muddy Waters lived most of his first 30 years in a house on this site, part of the Stovall Plantation. He was first recorded here in 1941 by Alan Lomax, who was compiling songs for the Library of Congress. Muddy Waters is best known simply as the king of the Chicago blues. African American music on the Stovall Plantation was documented as early as 1901 by a Harvard archaeologist. Muddy Waters and his grandmother moved to the Stovall Plantation around 1915. The plantation remained his primary base until he moved to Chicago in 1943. Waters' cousin, the Reverend Willie Morganfield, was born on Stovall Plantation but he turned down offers to sing the blues and devoted his talents to the church, becoming a popular gospel recording artist in the 1960s. Eddie Porter wrote a number one rhythm and blues hit, Five Long Years, in 1952, and it was born here on Stovall Plantation. Blues bassist Dave Pecan Porter later lived in a house that Muddy Waters had occupied. Porter was active in the Clarksdale blues scene from the 60s throughout the 1990s. Only in the 1980s, when the house sat in disrepair, did tourists begin visiting it as a muddy water shrine. WROX Radio, Clarksdale's first radio station, went on the air June 5, 1944, from studios at 321 Delta Avenue. From 1945 until 1955, the station was headquartered here at 257 Delta. Legendary disc jockey early Soul Man Wright became the top personality in local broadcasting after joining the WROX staff. Among the notable blues artists who hosted programs or performed on the air at this site are Ike Turner, Robert Nighthawk, Sonny Boy Williamson, Raymond Hill, and Dr. Ross. WROX featured the finest broadcast studios in the state of Mississippi 
When the station moved into this building on July of 1945, the Clarksdale Daily Press reported. The station was purchased from its founder, Robin Weaver, by the Imes family of Columbus, Mississippi in the fall of 1944. The Imes family continued to own the station until 1990, first at this location and later at the Alcazar Hotel building. In 1944, the station manager was so taken with Wright that he broke the color barrier and offered him a regular show as WROX's first African-American announcer. He developed a dual on-air persona as the Soul Man when he played rhythm and blues music, and then he became Brother Early Wright when he switched back to gospel. Wright continued to broadcast to a devoted following on WROX until 1998. He died in 1999 at the age of 84. This is the Alcazar Hotel where the station moved to from its previous location. This is 334 Isquina Avenue, the remote studio where black gospel groups perform live over the air and Wright's broadcast could be seen through the window. It became an epicenter for gospel groups. Wright became known for his creative advertising banter and his public service messages telling kids to stay in school, and he also encouraged citizens to vote. Well, I really do hope you've enjoyed your trip along the Music Heritage History Trail in Clarksdale today, and I really hope you'll come and visit it for yourself sometimes. Thank you.